History has placed us at a fateful crossroads. We must now choose between two paths. One path leads to a bad deal that will at best curtail Iran's nuclear ambitions for a while, but it will inexorably lead to a nuclear-armed Iran whose unbridled aggression will inevitably lead to war. The second path, however difficult, could lead to a much better deal that would prevent a nuclear-armed Iran, a nuclearized Middle East, and the horrific consequences of both to all of humanity. All right, ladies and gentlemen, joining us now, Dr. Andrew Bostom, professor of medicine at Brown University, PJ Media columnist and author of Iran's Final Solution for Israel. And Andrew, welcome. Uh, your, your take on, uh, on the prime minister's speech, I know you think he hit uh, just, just about all the right chords. He absolutely did. And, and I think, I think uh, to cut to the chase from, from my perspective, he really got to two of what I refer to as the three pillars uh, ideological pillars of, of, of this regime and unfortunately more broadly this society which is which is jihadism uh, Islamic Jew hatred and the third thing that he didn't get to is is this ugly ugly doctrine called Najis which is the which is the spiritual and physical impurity but regardless I, I, I thought his his understanding that that Khamenei himself the supreme leader tweets out uh, hatred uh, Jew hatred well let, let's that, let, let me interrupt you there we're gonna put up on the screen uh, something that you're an example of what you're referring to. Uh, let's put that up uh, right now. There it is. Uh, Israel is the sinister, unclean, rabid dog of the region. Uh, and that's tweeted out. It's a picture. People could see it on the screen by uh, the by what the Ayatollah. Yes, yes. And, and what he's getting at with the word unclean, Steve, this is this is the, this is not just doctrine. What what it means is that's the that, third pillar that, you were talking about. Exactly is that is that is that Jews in particular, but non-Muslims in general, are spiritually and physically unclean, and it's a form of, of dehumanization, which of course can 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 rationalize their annihilation. Now, through 1923, we have accounts um, based on Shiite Islamic law, non-Muslims, particularly Jews, again, who were ghettoized and, and actually wore badges, by the way, of, of, of you know 500 years before the Nazis uh, right. in, in Iran. Right. Uh, and part of the reason was to, because they were unclean, and they were not allowed to go out if it rained or snowed because their impurity could wash off onto Muslims. Now, this doctrine you know, fell by the wayside largely, thank goodness, during the period of, of the Shahs, of the Pahlavi Shahs from about 1925 to 1979, but it came back full force uh, in, in Iran after the so-called revolution, and it was promoted largely by the man who turns out to be the inspiration, the, the alleged inspiration, for the Green Movement, uh, Ayatollah Montaveri. He was worse than, on this doctrine than, than Khomeini himself. Uh, I mean, it's just it, it's deeply rooted, and, and Steve, if people would understand this, that it's not just Jews, by the way, they, they were singled out, but it's all non-Muslims that were subjected to this. This is the kind of dehumanization where the next step to genocide is, is not so difficult to understand. Andrew, there's nothing that Iran could do, I believe, of, let me rephrase that, there's hardly anything Iran could do or say regarding Israel, Jews, the United States, Christians, wouldn't matter to Barack Obama. He is going to sign a deal. Yes, yes, and, and, that's, and that's why the real regime replacement, because I'm not so sanguine about regime replacement in Iran, you know, of course, you can't get worse than this, but you probably won't get much better right. based, on the, based on the pervasive ideologies in the country. On the, other, the real regime change we need is in this country, and our entire policy-making class, Steve, what is, what is criminal is that serious, serious military assessments have shown that we could cripple their nuclear program in one evening of combined uh, missile strikes from the sea, from B-52s, and the massive ordnance penetrator bomb, which we can drop from our B-2 stealth bombers. One evening campaign would set them back at least five years. And, and maybe it would be such a punch in the face that, that, that these that religious fanatics would, would, could, would consider right. maybe it's not worth it. Andrew, I know you're speaking out in Queens, New York today. Uh, have a great speech, and we'll speak to you soon, sir. 
Take care, Steve. All right, bye take bye. care. All right, folks, uh, up next, former White House spokesman Ari Fleischer will be here for two segments. Don't miss this. We're going to hit Netanyahu. We're going to hit on Hillary and her emails. And uh, who better to talk about all this in security at the White House than the former White House spokesperson?